Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are getting everything prepped for your viewing pleasure. Hopefully we don't stack up that kill counter anymore today. Ah, ah. Just a minute or two and we'll be cruising. Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Goodness gravy. I am here, you are here. Look at all these wonderful, astute individuals in the chat. Welcome to Flory and Yalaza and Spood Knight and Super Scrapper and Schmile and Wolken Form and Chicken by Fi. And that was only Twitch. Now we have to do YouTube. Oh my gosh. Dominic Trey, original Lord Drow streams. Ken O'Neill, Slorn Tetson, Wizard Jerry, Bearded Frog. Oh my gosh, it just it keeps going, Freg, Freg Spitvet. I'm trying to find new names. Dinny's Bondarin, Bon, Din, Dinzy, Din. I can't, oh my gosh, why am I reading <laughs> usernames? I'm terrible at this. And yet I've attempted to do so. Oh my gosh, welcome everybody. Sincerely, all of you who've been sneaking in here early for the streams, you're so excited. You can't get enough of it. So you get in here, the appreciate I love it. It's great. It's super great. Oh my gosh. But sincerely, um, welcome to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, of course, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador. I am your servant. I am your guide through all things Everspace 2. And I'm of course joined in the comms with Geek Bite Gary. Hello, Gary. Howdy, good evening, everyone. How are you, Eric? Wonderful. Oh, goodness. look at this chap. Oh, isn't he so swell asking me how I'm doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you, Gary? Not bad. Good. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So through the course of this stream, we are going to continue on our nightmare mode. Uh, I keep calling it mode. It's not a mode. It's a difficulty. Nightmare difficulty. Woo! Um, we are now in the depths of Union. We have to navigate that space, uh, tracking down Maddox and all that fun stuff. And through the course of our adventures, the comms are open for everyone on Twitter, everyone on, or excuse me, not Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube, and on Steam. When you have questions, ask them. We would be delighted to help fill you in on anything. Anything that's out there, just kind of like in the ether where you're like, well, hey, are they planning on doing this? What about that thing? Ask, we will try and get clarity as soon as possible. In fact, let's go ahead and start with the very first one before we even click the continue button. I saw a question from Dominic Troy asking about direct storage, which is a direct X12 feature with parallel processing for SSD performance, blah, 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 blah. Basically, um, that's a great question. I love that question so much. And so I've relayed it directly to the team. I just passed the baton. Hopefully somebody will be sneaking out during their uh, extended weekend vacation and be able to follow up on that front. Hopefully, hopefully. But, uh, and maybe Michael would know because Michael, the CEO of Rockfish Games is also in the chats. He's watching you all and he's watching me. Whew. 
watching me fix my button. Sorry, ladies, this guy is taken. All right, let's get onto this right up in here. I'm gonna load our nightmare new. <clears throat> All right, so last stream, I had mentioned that I was going to do a bunch of stuff in between the streams. And I thought about it and I thought, no, that doesn't give the authentic Everspace 2 experience. You ought to see what it's like whenever you want to upgrade your gear, find items, do all of that sort of management. So that's actually what we're gonna do here. I am showing you raw gameplay. That's the intent. I'm not gonna doctor things up and make it all super pretty. I wanna give you the experience. This is what it looks like. So from where we last left off, we had a bunch of stuff just hanging out. I do see some nanobots I already wanna move over. Uh, and we need to start figuring out like, how are we gonna upgrade our gear? Cause we're clearly under geared at this time. We could go through crafting. Um, we also need to evaluate our perks too. Um, where's our tractor beam at? Oh, oh, we can, oh no, we, have, we need Atheum crystal. Okay. Um, and another one that I wanted was the mining tracker. Heat detector and neutron membrane. Can we craft those? Let's see if we can craft those. Uh, that's a neutron membrane. Oh, we can craft those. Okay, we've got one. Let's go ahead and just make this up to five. Okay, so we got five of those for the mining tracker. Uh, we would need more heats. Oh, it uses the flawless atheum though. The flawless atheum, I think I saw on the tractor beam. Yeah, we need 12 flawless atheum. You know, in order to find the atheum, we need to get the mining tracker. So I think this is more, I think this is more important. So we're gonna get the heat detectors as well. So we're gonna craft two heat detectors more and that will be enough. You see the green light even ticked on for us. Look at that. It was like, hey, hey, you can invest in this perk now. You absolutely know it. Let's invest all. Spend our credits. This mining tracker is quite a delight. I actually don't know if it shows up immediately on the map or if you have to launch first. I think you have to launch first. No, it does show up. Okay, cool. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna show you all resources that you have seen at the varied locations. This is a change that we had made previously. I, I mentioned it just in short, we used to have to where it would only track what you had officially found. Uh, now it just is a matter of seeing it. And uh, yeah, we've only just entered Union. We have not done a lot, but here you can see that we were fairly, fairly good about uh, exploring and collecting information on these spaces. Maybe it wasn't as good as I thought it was. Dang, all right. I need to get more information, but we might end up going Atheum Crystal. This might be our target destination. Um, I want to get more Atheum Crystal for our tractor beam, though. Um, and before we go to the Magic of Munami, that's actually what I think I want to do. So other than that, let's see about decking out our ship, because we now have the Close Combat Specialist, the Striker, and we need weaponry accordingly. So we got this Baron Executioner already. That's fantastic. That's going to complement what we are trying to accomplish. Uh, probably going to swap out this beam laser that we had crafted for mining, but we'll probably hang on to it. Just some quick looks around what else we have. Generally speaking, I think I want to sell more than scrap right now, even though we are... I'm eager to get the uncommon blueprints, but I think we need the monies a little bit more. Umbra is so tempting. Ah, Umbra, why do you tempt me so? You know, we're gonna put Umbra in place of the railgun because the railgun's kind of lost its luster. Plus we're gonna be fighting. Oh, we also have Penumbra. Okay, well, well, there, there we go. All right, that's nice. Would have enjoyed a different modifier, but we'll take it. So we are going to sell these other items. Look, all the stuff that we've been finding looks, it's all better than what we've been using. It's its ridiculous. Um, because the coil gun and penumbra are, hmm, maybe we want something other than the executioner now. Hmm. So many thoughts, so many questions. Um, but while I am doing this, Michael has gone and done the effort to answer some more questions, which I think is super great. 
So thank you for uh, thank you for doing that, Michael. Michael says not aware of any plans to support RTX uh, 10 or IO. I recall this would require using a plugin and or making a custom Unreal Engine, which we try to avoid at all costs because it makes ongoing development unnecessarily un unnecessarily more complex. Cool. So yeah, um, generally speaking though, we will try to consolidate the question and answer format to specific times. I just, I got, I got really excited. I see my boss answering questions like that. I want you guys to know uh, the responses and uh, yeah. So, all right, let's get the rest of this stuff sold. I mean, shoot, I think I'm even gonna sell some of our commodities. They don't sell too bad. Oh, we need to, we need to go over here. All right, uh, so we're just gonna sell all. For four, 4.5K, that's not too shabby. Let's sell a little bit more here. Hang on to those probably. Get rid of that. Uh, sell that. We're gonna hang on to our mining laser because I'm stubborn. I'm not gonna sell these red ones because I want to have a bit more value from them. So, all right, very good, very good. So with our crafting, I'm not too worried about the rest. The big thing that I want to follow is gonna be the flawless Atheum Crystal and the Atheum Crystal, which is why our next destination is at a place that has high Atheum Crystal deposits. So let's start our little backtrack. And as we do that, there's gonna be one other little thing that we can accomplish. It's gonna be this outlaw hunt alongside the Cedo Explorer. I want to get that so we can move around Cedo much faster. It's always a good thing to complete the challenges, the Explorer challenges in particular. They're not too hard to do and the benefit is awfully nice. All right. Hi, apart from your voice, is it possible to change Woo. aspects of your personality? Yes, that is possible. Is there any way to make you a bit friendlier, a little less cynical? Such a swell suggestion. A jolly hive makes for a happier ride. Oh. oh, my sweet, scrappy, hell no. Stop that, please revert to default. I knew you would see reason. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I would totally approve of swapping hive to that. Oh my gosh. I'd get an absolute kick out of that. So much. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, I am seeing more questions sneak on in. Awesome, keep asking those questions. Like I said, we will have um, a moment in the stream where we do go and cover all of those things. Welcome to everybody who's sneaking in still. So good, so good. Spoot Knight says, sweet scrappy hell no, it is so well delivered. Yeah, oh my gosh, absolutely. The, the beautiful voice of Ray Chase is fine work. Couldn't agree more. He's done a little bit of voice acting right here, so. Good, good stuff. Oh gosh, I look, I look over and I see all I want out of DLC is an Eric voice pack for Hype. No, nobody wants that. You don't want that. Do not encourage this behavior. Vigo, stop it, you. Stop it, you. <laughs> oh my gosh. By the way, Vigo in the chat, um, he's he is a Alienware uh, extraordinaire. That's what I'm going to call him. I've actually been joining him on streams on Mondays. Alienware does those streams, and uh, I I join him along for the ride of his adventure through Everspace 2, at least for two hours. You guys should definitely follow up. We do ping the Discord for streams on that day as well. It's a bit different time, but it's always a good time encourage you to do so. Oh, and uh, speaking of challenges, which I didn't say anything about a challenge, that's kind of a weird transition. Don't worry about that. Uh, we needed to, yeah, we just need to get very close to the sun. All right, let's do this real quick and we're gonna unlock super speed. Woo! All right. I love how, I love how Twitch is all like really focused on the stream and having these playful conversations. And then YouTube is off in their own world talking about, I, what, what are you guys, 
let's make sure we don't get too crazy on YouTube, guys. I want to make sure that individuals who are um, wanting questions validated and whatnot that we are given the space to do so. <laughs> All right, we got the tea leaf color, and now we also have uh, a super awesome new ability where we can go super fast. Look at this. Lightning speed, ah, ludicrous speed. The only thing that's missing is going to plaid. Marco, if you are watching, it's an idea. It's it's an idea, okay? I'm just tossing it out there. Okay. So now we are at Nefty's Plains and we need to find some Atheon Crystal. I know just the place. Let me show you. Come with me on a little adventure down into the mines. That's right right into this very large mining apparatus. Apparatus? We uh, take this battery with you. All right, look at this. Ooh, fancy. We also get ourselves a little bit of goods to unlock. Energy core, mainframe component, and a memory recalibrator as well. That's, that's handy. Memory recalibrators help you clear off any um, unwanted decisions that you've made with your devices, which we actually did make one unwanted decision with one of our devices. We have an upgrade on, oh, no, we don't. For some reason, I thought we had an upgrade on a different one. But no, all is well and fine and dandy. Okay. But uh, should we desire removing any upgrade uh, points from any of our devices, the memory recalibrator effectively allows you to take it away and then you can put it somewhere else. Cool. All right, we also went into our inventory because I'm going to do this, just to make this uh, have better proc chance at the very least of what we are looking for. Look at all this sweet, sweet Atheum crystal. We have low energy because I just swapped the beam laser. Anytime you swap a weapon mid-flight, its energy has to effectively reset. We're getting straight Atheum. Come on. Come on! Is that all we got in this section? It looks like so. All right. Next. I think there's some iron that's just like casually hanging out, can spawn over here somewhere. We might just do a little loop just to see maybe there will be maybe there won't be nothing all right in that case we're gonna go back into the tunnels perfect you can fly on planet surface too absolutely Ooh, careful with the black up close, especially when it's Penumbra and you're doing more damage. Ooh. Pain, pain, more pain. Stop firing at me. We took way more damage than we should. Just not using my tools. Got to use your devices. Helps out so much. But every time we cycle between weapons, Penumbra and Umbra's set bonus allows you to increase your primary weapon damage by 30%. 30%. Absolutely. Stop making me want this game too much. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I, I apologize. I don't know what to say other than uh, you should buy the game. <laughs> but sincerely, I mean... Supporting development here. Um, I say supporting development like the game is unfinished. It's definitely done. Um, but we have taken note of a couple of things that we'd like to do. We do have premium DLC in the books for next year. We also uh, are creating free content update just because we want to add more. Honestly, that's, that's the short of it. We just want to add more. And we'll give you more information on what that looks like and how that's all planned out in the future. We may or may not be having some thoughts about things revolving around that. Maybe. Alright, how are we doing on 
Okay, we need... Let's see, how much, how much short? Oh, six! We need one flawless atheum and six atheum crystal. We are so close. Oh my gosh. Goodness gravy. All right, let's, uh... I think the, uh, the other cave on the other side also has some too. We're gonna fly over there. Frames are smooth today. Nice 60 frame stream, just the way I like it. Mm. All right, let's see what else we got. No whammies, no whammies. Wait, no generation? Oh, the pain. The pain. Ouch. That's okay, I know that we can find some more. We can find some more, I know it. I think Eric likes gravy and not. You caught me. I do in fact like gravy. I am an American. Let's head on over to this undiscovered site. I'm pretty sure there's some Atheum crystal here. And we can also do like a challenge while we're at it to continually making progress, moving forward. That's what we like to see, right? That's what we like to see. Looks crisp, glad. Yeah, we have um, updated some elements of the game for further optimization. There'll probably be even more tweaks on that front. There's still some problem areas, I would say, but for the most part, we've seen across the board improvements for all systems. And that's what we're going for. We will continue to refine it so long as we can, so long as that's you know, within our capabilities. All right, we don't want to get super crazy here because our, our goods aren't like the best right now. Why are we using the beam laser? We mined the color of the ship right off of it. That's how that works, right? Clear these guys out, and then we're gonna destroy some anemones. Ooh, blueprint, I saw a blueprint. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, things are coming together much better. Feels good. Actually, the corrosion mine blueprint at Uncommon, that's, that is a delight to see. Now, we do want to be a little bit careful about, oh, this copper? Oh no, I need Atheum Crystal. I need Atheum Crystal. That's what I'm looking for here. I thought there was, maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, those are, that's a sniper, you, you. How dare you? Let's go back. I want my stuff. They've locked on to me. What type of plating was that? All right. More copper, more copper. I mean, we're gonna need copper at some point. I can't complain too much. And we're completing challenges. We're making progress. Hopefully get a mainframe uh, override here as well. Ah. Nice. Whoop! Guys, don't play with your food. That's rude. Whoop! All right. Let's get some scrap metal from over here. Take out some more anemones.
So, uh, fun fact, the flak <clears throat> has a damage radius of 100 meters. So if you shoot it and it collides with something that's within 100 meters, it damages you. This is something that I, I say frequently and uh, for some reason I forget about it. I do it to myself. All right, asteroid cluster complete. Two more of this delicious copper. Let's see, is there any, actually, look. is there any more? There's an unknown crystal, Atheum is here. Probably not a lot, but we're gonna have to check it out. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna do a little bit more exploration in this area cause I just, I really want it. We're also gonna do this to save time on this front right now. I don't recommend mining with the uh, flat because of proc chances, but it's gonna serve our purposes here. Now I just have to remember uh, how to get out of here. Ah, oh, that's right. There we go. There should be, yes! Yes! Yes, all right. Ah, oh. what a treat. And we got the flaw, oh! Oh! It's time, it's time. Let me have that beautiful, delicious, whole all tractor beam. Oh, we did it guys. We did it. Oh my goodness. That feels good. Not gonna lie. I feel that's like such an accomplishment. You get to that in this game. It's just like everything. It's just going up from here. It's just, it's just going up from here. chat. I love how much fun you're all having. As you should. It, apparently I forget how to navigate out of spaces. There we go. There we go. A little more copper. We'll take it. Why not? We will take it. Yes. The deed is done. Let us move on. Actually, wait. Do we get, do we get all secrets? Shoot, I don't know if we did or not. We might have to come back. That's fine. We might have to come back. Okay, now that that's done, let's head on over to Union. Let's make some progress. Of course, it looks a little scary over there. Let's have one more look at our inventory. Oh yeah, let's, let's get this. And I want more boost speed, please. I know it's just 1% but it makes me happy. What else we got? No. No. You know, I think we're gonna do the shield breaker missiles with the corrosion mines. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive. I know, I get it. Cause it's like, oh, well, if you have corrosion missiles, you don't have to worry about shields. You're correct. Yes. This is just more for having options, so to speak. Let's just cover cover the grounds that we're approaching, yeah? Let's see, a raid booster that's slightly better, but doesn't recharge uh, as, it doesn't use as much energy, or it uses more energy. That's not worth the, the small percentages. 13.9 energy per second, no, 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 that's not worth it. No, thank you. All right. Very good. Yes, corrosion mines do damage over time, absolutely. And what's also magical about the corrosion mine is that it's a splash damage effect. So it's probably a little overpowered in actuality. It does a ton of damage even if you hit two targets, let alone three, four, or five. That being said, it does take a carefully placed shot to maximize its damage, so it's probably not gonna change too much. I still think it's the most popular choice in most bomber builds that I've seen. A lot of bomber builds, uh, bombers uh, convert secondary weapons into energy. Whenever you are fl seeing any bomber build, I feel like they're just paired with uh, corrosion mines. It's, it's like a natural, they always have them.
This water is particularly delicious today. I don't know what happened. It's it's not even close to German water. Oh my gosh. Do you get do you know what I'm talking about when I say German water? Does that <laughs> All right. Quick story time. This is a little little diatribe. But um <clears throat> First time that I ever went over and saw my teammates, because we're based out of Hamburg, Germany. We're, the entire team is based out of Hamburg, Germany, and then there's me over here, and Gary's in the UK. Um, yeah, we, it, well, actually, we also have a guy, uh, Lee's in Canada. We're, we're branching out. But, man, the, the purity of German water? Oh, just the tap water alone? It's immaculate, guys. It's seriously, it's it's nuts. It, but however, it's uh, it's also, it's not like you're not supposed to just drink the tap water in Germany. I don't know. Is Michael? Is it okay if I'm talking about this? I don't even. Like, I feel like there's like a German law out there somewhere. Because generally speaking, you're supposed to order your, you know, your your water. Uh, it's generally mineral water that you would order, which is, I mean, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's mineral water. And it's generally sparkling as well. <laughs> anyway, man, that was a serious. Let's get back into it. <laughs> I'm a water connoisseur, that's right. Yes, let me talk very briefly about water for a second and its qualities. Detonator drone. Mean. I think we actually died here to the Okar last time, if I'm not mistaken. We were trying to be super cheeky. But I want to explore this place a little bit. I want to, uh, I really want to get those outlaw drones with missiles. Do we have just generic missiles? We could just make generic missiles for that. Let's do that. Generic missiles, please. Right. Just, just for this little outlaw hunt, because I see a bunch of outlaw drones. Look at that! Oh, it's waiting for us. Just waiting. Yeah. So, so Michael actually says the fun fact: Germans. Germany's tap water has better quality than bottled water because the laws for tapped water are super strict. It's it's amazing. It's seriously nuts. It's yeah. Like I'm not saying to you know go to Germany and drink out of their toilet, but oh my gosh, that asteroid came out of nowhere. Did you see that? I'm all flying. The asteroid's like, nope, it wasn't me. I definitely was flying perfect there. Jeez! Ouch pain! Well, this just went from everything's fine to this is this is not fine. This is not okay. Wow, that was actual pain. But hey, look, we completed our challenge. Great, destroy an ally base from an unknown signal without taking any hole damage. Specifically, hole damage. That's fine. We'll track that one. We're gonna see if we can start uh, knocking that out. Hopefully next time it's not our shields. I also like how it damaged the homing missiles specifically. This is actually a fun time to mention one other thing. At one point we thought about having the slot itself get damaged as opposed to the item. At one point we thought about having the slot itself get damaged instead of the item. So that would mean even though I'd swap this out, whatever is put in this slot would still be damaged. And, you know, there was some conversation surrounding that one. And ultimately, of course, we did not implement it. We felt like having it more on this front where each individual item takes damage is uh, maybe better for a more casual audience is how I'm going to word that. But uh, yeah. Those are webbing mines. I feel so dangerous having this flat cannon, <laughs> knowing how much damage it could truly do to me. But man, does that, that's so satisfying. Taking out all those drones so quick. <gasps> More Atheum. 
That's fine, they're just turrets. They can't they can't move in front of us as as something that doesn't move at all. That's impossible, right? That's never happened earlier in the stream about two minutes ago. Oh, that flawless Atheum Crystal. I need a better energy core. Whew. Little focus mode here. I just don't want to do a dumb. Power core dispenser. Excellent. We saw a... Those mines there the whole time. <laughs> Guess I just didn't look off in that direction. Wow. Took care of that nonsense. All right. So let's get this container and the power core. Oh, that's power core socket. That's power core dispenser. You know what you have to do. You know what you have to do. One other quick detail about what you're looking at on screen. This is an unstable power core. Well, what does that mean? What's, how's that different from a normal power core? Well, the difference is that this one can explode when you're holding it. So if something were to hit you or you were to hit something like say a mine, it can blow up in your face. You have to be a little more careful with unstable power cores. I like how we found homing missiles even though we crafted those other ones. Get out of here. You're dead to me. We also appear to need some more consumables to fill in our slots. Look at this guy. Goodness gravy. This, this area is quite large, and uh, there's two parts about this particular area. I should ca stop calling it particular area. Abadan 2. There's a central point that has a base in it, and then there's like this ring that goes all the way around. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can kind of get just a sense of this. This ring, it's almost like a track. It goes all the way around. All the way around. And there's lots of little hidden secrets on that ring. And some of which will provide what's needed in the middle. I'm gonna go straight to the middle because there's some stuff to unlock. These areas are massive though, by the way, goodness. This is not just a simple game where you warp in, you get all the information and you just collect everything. No, 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 no. This is not a go to the dot and collect it things up simulator. There is actual exploration required. You do have to use your brain. I know some people don't like that. Should be enough. Ow, pain. That's right, Hive. Shut your computerized mouth hole. It's actual. That was that was really bad, guys. There's another... I am just getting sur... Oh, it's because of you. Shame on me for not having any um, mobility devices at the moment. That would prove to be much better. All right, we're going to try and focus this guy down. It should, in fact, hurt everyone else around. That was awful. Strikers... Um, Striker's alt is so much better when you're up against large numbers of foes. So anybody who was wondering, why hasn't he used his alt yet? That's actually why. I was hoping to connect all three of them, but I digress. Once we're done with this combat, we'll get underway with the uh, with the questions, because I know we've, we're going past a little bit of where we normally go. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and let's start answering questions. So, uh, Gary, go ahead and toss one at me. What do we got? All right, so we've got 
lined up for you. First up, we have uh, a bit of a um, a language question from Slorine Tetson uh, over on YouTube, and he wants to know: Is Keon pronounced K E Y dash O A N or K A I O N? It's pronounced Keoni. <laughs> Keoni. Keoni system. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Good question. <laughs> I love, I love helping uh, individuals pronounce things correctly because I'm terrible at it myself. There's a, there's beautiful <laughs> irony there. Uh, so yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Keone. Yep. I've never heard you butcher anybody's name ever. Yeah, not once. Never. <laughs> Next question, please, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Well, we have uh, Wizard Jerry over on YouTube. Uh, he wants to know, is there any plan to add extra visual effects for certain consumables? Uh, for example, the damage booster. Currently, it's only a timer and indicator that are displayed. Uh, I mean, there's not necessarily plans, but we are still prone to feedback even after 1.0. Um, and we have had some discussions about um, the visualization of certain conditions. That has come up. I don't know if we've had it as a meeting internally um but there's there's some there's some discussion floating about it's certainly not something that's going to be like hotly prioritized right now based on the other things that we're working on Ooh. but your observation is a, a keen one it's definitely something that we have uh discussed at least in part it's possible i would not expect something like that to be added uh, like in a hot fix anytime soon or anything like that. It's definitely not something that we're, we have to do this, you know, there's, there's none of that. So let's go to another question. Okie dokie, we have one from uh, Pesky Husky. Uh, they've not played Everspace 2 in a while and they didn't understand the ship aesthetics that they could do. But is it possible to change the boost colors, for example, to white? Yes, there is a white boost color that does inevitably get unlocked. That's totally possible. You do have to earn the boost colors. So we were, uh, we took a couple initiatives. This is normally closed, by the way. Um, I opened this from the other side in a previous segment, um, probably. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, all of the boost colors are unlocked specifically by doing challenges. Specifically by doing challenges. So us getting Pseudo uh, Explorer, we unlock the tea leaf. Actually, I love that color. We're gonna swap that because our ship is even green. It'll be very applicable here. Uh, but then with like Outlaw Hunt, if we master this one, we'll get Cinnabar, which is a red color. Each one has a different uh, color that you can unlock. As in you make more progress, you can unlock more uh, engine trail colors specifically from challenges. Otherwise, cockpit colors, ship colors, and emissive lights, they all get randomly dropped from your foes. So you have a little bit less uh, ability to go after a specific ship color or uh, emissive color. But the engine trails, you can do a little bit more due diligence. Did I, I went backwards. Oh, let's try that again. And this might not actually be the one that is locked normally. I might have been thinking of a different one. But uh, I digress. A great question. A great question. Let's, uh, let's have another one. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Wizard Jerry asked one, and this actually is for Michael, uh, if you're still around, uh, Sir Boss, Sir CEO. Um, he came across a press article this week where Michael mentioned that his favorite ship is a big tanky ship. Uh, and he wants to know, does he refer to the gunship or the bomber? That's a fair question. Which one were you referring to, Michael? Yeah, both of people them are. People want to know. Are, the people have spoken. Yeah, both of them are absolutely considered to be basically tanks in space. So I feel like a lot of people associate the gunship more with the tank, just because it kind of has its um, legacy from Everspace One, and people would call it the space tank. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what he responds with. That'd be a fun little answer. I'm just doing a loop, aren't I? Let's let's move on. Instead of collecting more stuff from here, we're going to move on. But we'll keep answering questions. Uh, what's the next one while Michael is uh, hopefully answering that one? Um, just a, an update from Bearded Frog. He's just wondering if we've got an update on the boost math, which was causing a bit of mental meltdown. I think I supplied boost maths. Boot, boot. 
<laughs> and not that you butchered any of the words or anything. Let's just stop it. Uh, let's see. Let me. Okay, so because I had a conversation with Hans Christian about this, let's just let's just pull out this sort of thing. Um, so I think the the key issue, the the I almost want to call it misinformation, which I hate calling it that, but I think that's what I would call it, is that the terminology and talking about this booster maths is what's causing so much trouble. Uh, for example. Speed gain is not the gain on your speed. It's the gain whenever you're boosting that's a multi multiplied by your speed. So you're not like gaining more speed just inherently from speed gain. It's your it's your boost speed. Okay. So so anytime let me let me show you let me just show you um, the ship here. So our speed is 91 meters per second right? Our speed is 91 meters per second. So on in our inventory, our eco raid booster, our speed gain is 269%. That is our boost speed. Okay. So this speed right here, this is your lateral speed. Okay. These are your laterals. You're moving forward, left, right, back, down, up, any particular direction. That's the maximum speed you can move naturally. Okay. Then you have your speed gain, which is your boost. Okay. And you have your acceleration, which I would like to get the official number of what that looks like, what the normal 100% amount is from 0% acceleration to your full acceleration. But that acceleration is increasing the base acceleration uh, to 377%, right? So instead of it being 100%, which is normally where it would set, now it's operating at 377%, okay? That is what gets you from your normal speed to your boost speed or speed gain, okay? Whew. All right. Then you have other modifiers, which I don't have a cargo unit that has it, but you have plus percent speed and plus percent boost speed. The plus percent speed is just to this value. <laughs> and the plus percent boost speed is effectively increasing the speed gain it's multiplying it by 10%. So it's not additive. Conf it's not confusing at all, right? It's clear as mud. <laughs> so from all of this though, because like this was a floating question for a while, I, I kind of discussed with Hans Christian a little bit. We might change some wording on some of this because I mean, even I got confused about it. I mean, so uh, yeah, we, we may or may not change how some of this is worded to be determined hasn't gone through approvals yet this is probably the first that michael's hearing it as well but uh we got some suggestions in the pipe we'll see so hopefully that clears things up and if you if that if that generated new questions uh uh we're sorry we are not available to answer your call right now <laughs> what's the next question we have <laughs> Uh, we have one from Wizard Jerry, and it's a bit of a law question, actually, and it okay. relates to uh, DAX. Um, and he's just asking, is Byron uh, or is the Byron system located in the DMZ? Technically, it is not located in the what you would call the demarcation lines of the DMZ. But for all intents and purposes, it's close enough because it's in the Belta grades and the Belta grades is used frequently as the other language of the DMZ as a whole. So the Beltagrades is where all of the Okar colonial conflicts went down, right? It's the Beltagrades are also where the Okar live. The Beltagrades are also where most of the colonial mining and uh, prospecting uh, areas have been established as well. Like, so you could just effectively say, yeah, it's in the DMZ. Is it in the DMZ proper? Uh, well, you know, that's that's a little bit harder to answer. It's a little bit harder to answer. But yeah, a little bit harder to answer. Also, we need to not die here. Oh gosh, we haven't, we did not go back to repair. Oh man, we're gonna take a death. No, I don't wanna die. No, no, back to the station, back to the station. Don't poke me. 
We're gonna go to a station and refresh our things. We're gonna repair before we go exploring. I was dangerous, how dare I? Let's just go back to Prescott. So yeah, more or less, yes, Byron is in the DMZ. It might not necessarily be in the specific marked demarcation lines of the DMZ if proper. Yeah, all right, hopefully that's not confused. Oh my gosh. You're all asking questions and I'm probably just making you more confused today. Whew. Next question, please. Let's confuse someone <laughs> else out there. <laughs> uh, a question from Esky Husky again over on YouTube. Okay. Uh, is there any plan on new weapons or weapon types uh, with the free updates and possibly expansion in the future? I mean, we would love to. Are there specific plans to add new weapon and weapon types? That would be telling. But probably. I mean, let's 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 be real about it. If we want to add more stuff with more content, that includes weapons. That includes modules. So probably. This is just a wild guess. <clears throat> Next question, please. <laughs> Right, uh, this one's from RGB Toaster. I know you touched on this last week, uh, and it was, is there or will there be an official way to enjoy some Everspace 2 music, like a playlist on Spotify or YouTube? Uh, but I do believe we did answer this one last week okay. as well. Okay, yeah, so, um, and I think, did Michael answer it in the chat earlier? Yeah, he's, he's added some extra to it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I know that Michael's been working with Gero on OST stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, this, the short answer is we are going to have the OST available. Absolutely. When? That's a, that's that's the question. That is the question. Um, I mean, preferably we wanted to have the OST drop like at 1.0, but you know, whew, things happen. Elements get shifted around and you just gotta have to work with what you got. But um, do know that it's definitely in the works. And that is something that we want to get out to you so you can enjoy it. There's some absolutely banger. Just, oh my gosh. I, I, mm. I mean, you see me dancing all the time during these streams. So you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, we're, we're hoping to get that out the door sooner than later, for sure, for sure. I still want more credits, so we're gonna be selling a lot of the stuff. Uh, those are just inherently better. Even though there's only 10 of them, that kind of stinks, but. Was this what we were using? Yeah, that's what we were using before. Not too worried about it. Plug these in. Let's go ahead and answer another question while I'm uh, finagling my equipment. Uh, right. Um, before I try and blow your mind with a load of more of uh, speed oh. maths questions, which seem to be coming in. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, Slorian Tetsons uh, has asked, uh, are there any plans to separate out Renown between all the different factions? Right now it is one big pot. Uh, will the wanted system be expanded upon? Yeah, so um, no, there are no plans. So originally we were looking at doing sort of like a multi-faction system with different sort of rewards based on who you have your uh, faction uh, reputation with. Um, and it was, it was a redundant system. What we ended up finding is by creating these more, like more factions to like have different sort of properties with, what we were doing is we were just copying and pasting and giving it a new name. It wasn't actually new content. In fact, it felt like we were cheating the system in a way, and it just was stretching it out needlessly, pointlessly in some cases. It just didn't feel right. It didn't feel good. That's one of the big reasons why we consolidated to a single renowned system. That way you can progress it all the way through, get your loot, and you're good to go. Could more happen to the renowned system? Sure, some, some more elements could be added to the renowned system. Um, that's certainly a possibility, but as far as us splitting it out to where you have like different faction reputations, again, like going back to that, I don't see that happening. I do not see that happening, not with the trouble that it was causing with our other integral systems and uh, just make it, it's just like fluff. It was, it was needless fluff. So no, I, probably not. Um, also, Michael says the OSD will be made available on Steam and GOG as well as on console this 
Summer, thank you for that confirmation. I don't know if we actually had a specific time frame yet. Uh, so you heard it here first. OST is this summer. Plan of the summer. So thanks for that follow up. Okay, um, I need to keep clearing this out. Ask me more questions. Hopefully it's not more maths. Uh, yeah, sadly the next ones that are coming in are all maths questions. Okay, all right. Well, let's let's hear. Maybe we should I'll give you the easy one first. <laughs> one plus one. Uh, yeah. Let's hear him. Let's hear him. Right, uh, Slorin Tetson over on YouTube. Uh, he's basically just asking for some clarification. So, okay. is the boost percentage a multiplier of your ship's regular speed? So, if the ship's speed is 100 meters per second and the boost speed is 300 percent. Does the boost uh, speed equal 300 meters per second or 400? So the speed gain percent that you see here, this is not a multiplication or anything like, oh, well, actually it is technically a multiplication. So what this is, is it's saying 272%. So normally your speed gain is just 100%. It's just flat 100%. But by being at 272%, it's approximately uh, 2.72, uh, no, not 2.72, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the, math is hard. It's times 2.72. That's what it would be. So 2.72 of your speed equals your boost. In this particular case, well, actually, no, that's not true because we also have uh, we also have our boost speed increased by 18% because we're a striker. So that's, but <clears throat> don't worry about that for now. The main thing, the main thing, this isn't confusing. So your speed, <laughs> your speed at 91 meters per second, to get to your boost, you're multiplying your speed by, <clears throat> uh, you're multiplying it by 2.72. 2.72, you're multiplying it, okay? That's what your boost speed is. Gosh, this is gonna, it's ridiculous. This is gonna, this this stream is just gonna be so garbled with maths. We might as well just call this the maths stream. I need to go get a chalkboard and a and a ruler and just put on some dorky glasses. Be like, okay, kids. Oh my gosh. Ah, I'm gonna try and find an outlaw base uh, while we answer another question. Let's try and get through them. Let's try and get through them. <laughs> this is the build up build up stream where I'm trying to get to level 10 and be prepared for the next mission. So it's all good. Uh -huh. um, we do have another math question. <clears throat> uh, this, uh, <laughs> this one's for Bearded Frog, so this one really might melt, melt your mind. There's no uh, excuse, we... Bearded Frog. It's no excuse. <laughs> if we have a cargo unit that has a plus speed boost, is it going to add boost speed since it comes from speed? What's the effective difference on boost speed with a plus speed bonus versus plus boost speed bonus? <laughs> yes, the speed is the plus speed is the normal speed down here. So plus 10% would mean you're you're taking 10% of this and you're adding to it. That's what you're doing. If it's boost speed, we're actually talking about the speed gain. So speed, speed gain. Speed and boost speed, they're kind of the same things, but they're worded differently. This, remember what I said earlier in the stream where we recognized that there was a little bit of misinformation and we were probably gonna change some terminologies? This is exactly what I'm talking about because it's confusing. Because speed gain and boost speed being the exact same thing, but targeting different words, it's, yeah. We, we recognize this, all right? So this is something that we are looking into something that we will probably change just to make it a bit more clear. So yeah, when you see the plus 10%, you're effectively um, adding on 10% of whatever your value is of speed. So, I'm really happy that we got a base here because we want to try and get this outlaw challenge done. Oh, I need better thrusters. Or I need a device that has mobility. Ooh. Why is this guy not dying? That is not a pleasant sound. All right. 
You don't think I understood your question? You were asking about the differences between plus speed and plus boost speed on a cargo unit, right? The plus speed applies to this value. The plus boost speed applies to the speed gain value. Or was your question different beyond that? If you want to follow up Bearded Frog, I'll definitely allow it. Um, otherwise, let's have one more question, and then I'm going to focus in and try to do this because this is going to be this is going to be tricky. Right, uh, Paul Michel over on YouTube. Um, it may have already been asked. He said, but they've noticed that something is different about Aethon. Uh, was it originally initially planned for 1.0, or is it coming later? It was originally planned, yeah. Yeah, it's um. There were some name changes. Um, some were placeholder names, some were intentional names, some were um, just plugged in because we didn't want you to know the actual names. Um, so yeah, but yeah, Atheon was definitely planned from the beginning. I think it's position changed and some of the, uh, maybe some of the aesthetics about it changed from beginning to end, but uh, the theme is still exactly the same of what we intended to do. Yes! Level 10! Ugh! All right, that's good. Let's do another, let's do another question while I just am so happy about getting another perk activated. Uh, okay, okay, right. Uh, back to Slowing Tetson over on YouTube. He's just wanting to know what is the lightning gun, i.e. the Sentinel ult? Uh, the range and how many enemies does it arc to and can those distances stats be improved through bonuses uh great these are uh, this is a fantastic question oh my gosh a lot of maths questions um so basically the short of it is that um we've had a we had, we had like a question either it was on the stream or on the discord or on steam i can't remember the source it was somewhere where somebody was asking about more information regarding um, any sort of specialty stats and ultimates and stuff like that, uh, because we did actually go back through and clarify additional information on all of our devices. We went through and we adjusted and added all the cooldowns, all the ranges for every single device. It's all there for every single one. And it's possible that we could go back and also add that information to the alt so you can see uh, more clearly how that all comes together. Regarding alt damage increases, there was, I, I am rather confident that there were some changes in regards to how the damage system and damage scaling worked between certain ultimates. So, for the static value of the alt, I would have to go digging a little bit. I'd have to ask some questions, but that the whatever the static value is of the alt, it does increase based on like your firepower, for example. So it does gain the benefits of more or less everything else. But a fun little sort of note is that the ultimate for the uh, Sentinel is it doesn't actually do that much damage. It's kind of sucky damage, but because it, it's doing a tremendous amount of damage to all targets, it ends up being really effective, really good. And because it does in fact scale, um, yeah, there you go. That was the question, there's the answer. Um, in order to be more specific with that in regards to like the actual range, I wanna say it's 1.5 kilometers but I could be wrong. It'd be something that I'd have to check or dig. And because I'm quite literally trying to destroy this outlaw base, that would be a bit challenging to dig for. It's not something that's just gonna come up on a whim. Ow, pain! No, don't do this to me, no! I just need, I need you to be gone. All right, that's a little bit better. All right, let's do, let's do one more question. I'm gonna go on the outskirts here and then we're just gonna dive bomb this outlaw base. Okay, okay, right. Uh, last one for now from Denis Bondarenko, the name that you butchered earlier. Good. Uh, can you say what is the gameplay reason behind having a non-zero lock-on time? Uh, or why can't we change non-consumable equipment in rifts? Um, well, because we wanted to, well, there's a number of reasons for that. Oh my gosh, there's, there's a lot of, 
responses that I would need to make for this one. Um, so the short of it is that we wanted to make Rifts something of a unique system. Hang on, this is really loud. Ah! Oh, we totally just got, we just, we got completely crushed there. Shame on me for doing this in games while answering a hard question. Uh, we're, we are gonna die. I think I'm gonna intentionally die here. So let's, uh, let's just add this to the death counter. That's fine. And let's answer this question more directly. So the question is, why do we have the Rifts lock consumables? Why is there a lock on time for the missiles? I think this is a great question. And the short of that is that we wanted there to specifically be a lock on time for the secondaries as we were finding the power rating of the secondaries to be very strong over primaries. Because of course, of course they are. Why would the secondaries be less powerful than primaries because they actually do get consumed upon use? Why would they be, you know, why, like there, there has to be compensation for the benefits, right? And so in regards, oh my gosh, goodness gravy go away. So in regards to that compensation, that's why we do have uh, certain elements lock whenever you're in combat mode, when you're swapping weapons, it's gonna start from zero energy. It's gonna take time to plug these things in so long as you're in combat, which is directly applicable to the startup delays. I'll just leave it on screen for those who are curious. <clears throat> Regarding rifts, I don't know if you ever noticed, but when you start a rift, you, your ultimate gets maxed out regardless of where it's at and everything else gets locked, yes. <laughs> You have to complete the rifts with everything that you had on you. And regardless of what you use or don't use, when you are kicked out, you get all of it returned back. So if you spend three slots worth of 260 rockets and you spend out all four consumables of three on the bomber, is it three? You spend out all your consumable slots. When you get kicked out of the rift, it all comes back to you. What it's doing and what the idea is behind it is that you are setting up a specific build to use specific secondaries, specific consumables, specific everythings, and it's locked in for you to complete the rift with only that. We did not want you guys to be able to, in the middle of a rift, be like, oh, I need to change my style or, oh, I'm, I know how to cheese this enemy with that particular thing. No, no, no. The rift locks you in place because you are meant to complete the rift with what you enter in, okay? That's why it's designed like that. That's why it's actually designed like that. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's clarity on the question. Now, I'm gonna pause with, with questions. So much maths today, how dare you guys. And we are gonna focus down this, uh, this, what is this, base. We're gonna get this base going down. That is what we are going to do. Died from that? What a noob. All right, grab some of these goods. It was kind of nice dying and then, you know, having to do this again, because we get to level up to level 10 twice. That feels good, somehow. <laughs> All right, let's grab this. Ooh. I really, I don't want to get got from behind. Was that an armor drone? No, it's another sniper drone, but I, I don't I don't like him. He's not my friend. Let's clear him out. There we go. Nice and dead. My favorite type of outlaw sniper drone. Okay. Okay. Really don't want to take any whole damage from this. Let's see if we can find a good center point for all of our damage output needs for this ultimate. I just don't want to deal with that guy at all anymore. Um, also, I'm trying to remember where the, the hangar is on this particular base. I don't want to spawn more enemies. <clears throat> 
Oh, speaking of enemies. Ah! I was too close to it! That asteroid again. Oh my gosh, these... Oh my gosh, these asteroids are out to get me! Really? Stop it! Stop it! You b absolute punk! Oh my gosh. Nobody likes you, Greg. Jeez, Greg. Oh my god. <laughs> Woo! I haven't shot for any Gregs. <laughs> I was going to say, did you choose Greg just because it was easy to pronounce? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, Gary's taking over the stream from here, guys. Have a good one. Enjoy your day. Everything's great. <laughs> Jeez. Did you choose Greg because it was easy? good one I'll admit that's good well played and yes that is why I chose <laughs> all right this is a two-parter uh base because we have to keep going down here and there's more to be had there's more turrets ah I want to do I want to see I want to see how cheeky we can be here let's just not too much all right oh, that's that's actually not an opening nope, still not good getting closer we're almost there there we go yeah I did not invite you you were not invited he survived even? Oh my gosh. Look at us. We can't even cheese our way through this. So we, oh, no, 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 no. You back up. You back up. Oh my gosh. They're all coming out again. Now you just, just fly over there until you die, please. Thank you. All right. All of these proto scouts. What in the world? Really bad aim. Okay. Okay, that was good. We're almost there. Ah, no, 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 no. Nope. No, ah, 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 ah. You go over there. Okay, so we have an energy coil there, and we have the charge compensator over here. Or not charge compensator, the, uh, the, uh, what's it, what's it called? Fuel tank. Words are hard. We almost got this. Is the energy coil on the inside? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, they're, they're empty. It's green. Green means go, except for watermelon. Just have to face an elite outlaw madcap. No big deal. No big deal. Oh gosh. Why does our boost suck? All right, well, we're able to navigate around. That's good. Not, that's not pretty. We're just gonna leave. We're just gonna leave. We're just leaving. <laughs> we got our challenge complete. That's the important part, ladies and gentlemen. Challenge complete. Let's go back to Prescott and repair up. <sighs> There wasn't a good target for the ultimate T3 cube, I'm telling you. 
There wasn't a good target. I'm not skimping on it, I promise. It just wasn't available. I was even looking for one on the side of the base because I wanted to light up all of the uh, the turrets. I maybe did have one time I could have used it, but... The madcap, really? You think so? Yeah. Maybe. But hey, we did it! And not a scratch on us! Look at that pristine worksmanship here. Just, just take a look at this beaut. Just take a look at her! Not a dent! I am pretty sure you can see the wire that's holding the two parts of the ship together right there. <laughs> Even Michael's chimed in. Any target's better than no target. Okay, all right. I get it. So I'm gonna kill myself running into a wall over here. Let's get to the freelancer hangar. <laughs> uh, hey, you know what? Mission accomplished. Look at this. Look at this. We got Cinnabar. We can go into our beautiful ship. And actually the engine color that I actually want is this one, the tea leaf. I, I really like the tea leaf color. Look at that, isn't that great? Mm? Oh yeah, I really like that one. But we did unlock the red. Oh yeah, that one's also nice. Now to complement our newfound glory, we are gonna use these oranges because we're gonna use oranges, actual oranges. Um, that's what we're using. But it is going to highlight the rest of the uh, the beautiful. <laughs> we're gonna go fix our ship first. Let's, let's uh, <clears throat> repair up. Okay, much better. All right. So yeah, what we wanted to is we, we, I don't think we have a particular orange unlocked here. Yeah, we don't. But for the highlight colors, they're orange. So that's why the engines are going to match with this well. With the orange-ish cockpit. Yep. We have the sunburn emissives. So it does, in fact, come together. Maybe we should slap a decal on there because we are a rookie. That's particularly clear. Woo! Oh, I can't make it orange, though. <sighs> no decal yet. No decal yet. We need orange decals. But the idea is to have, like, the dominant color green and then have some highlighted orange. And the boosters, I feel like, are going to be in a much better position now. Just to highlight that. We are also gonna sneak a peek and see all the things that we can't afford, because that's always fun. That's always fun. We have a scout. Stinger. We could actually swap for one of these, but <clears throat> we're still gonna fly the striker. Because I haven't truly shown it off yet. I haven't. I need to be a little bit better. Hadron buffers. Let's look at Hadron buffers real quick. Wait. Hang on a second. Let me do that again. It's green, it is a green one, okay. The last one I checked, perfect. All right, prevents hadrons from colliding. No more mini black hole, perfect. And we need two of them. We already have one. Oh, I don't like that I am required to use three flawless atheum crystals. know about that. I think I might wait. I might wait. Ideally, we find a shop that just sells them. That would be ideal. My goodness. Look at all these commodities that we should probably start utilizing. Whew. Sell that. A pulse laser. That's pleasant. And maybe with the time we have, we could possibly do one of these. Well, we're not gonna do that one. That is death. Uh, corrosive death might be possible. Let's try and do a high risk area before the streams end. This could be either incredibly awesome because I accomplish it or um, hilarious because I don't. Third tractor perk ain't as necessary. It's true, it's not. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I am gonna wait, I do agree. The third tractor beam perk for anybody who's uh, curious, it just doubles the speed of the tractor beam. Let's see, do we have... Mm. That's fine. Let's keep on keeping on. That's fine. 
Let's also choose our level 10 perk. Perhaps we should choose play it safe. We're going for like the incredibly defensible, everything sucks and we're gonna die perks. And I think that's okay. I mean, progressive maintenance I've, I've been discovering is a bit better than I thought. It's a bit better than I thought. I'm glad that we changed the values here because before it was awful. It didn't do any help. <laughs> Uh, but we changed it to where now, uh, anytime your armor or your hull gets hit, um, it has a chance to just straight up reduce the device cooldown by 20%. And that procs every hit. So if you're getting hit by some, like, little pea shooter, that's the best case. But it can be very powerful if you have the right devices. I would argue that I don't have the right devices on my ship. I don't think I'm using the right ones. I'm a huge fan of the Magnetic Repulsor, but I don't think it's serving us as effectively as I'd like. I almost wonder if we should go to the Energized Boost or the Teleporter. Oh, we don't have the Teleporter yet. Okay. We need to buy a Teleporter. That's what I need to do. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and attempt to do this high-risk area. We'll see what happens. Progressive maintenance is good when you take damage. So it'd be amazing for me. I have been, I've been swimming in the, re, in the receiving of damage part of the stream, that's for sure. <laughs> Envision death number nine inbound, probably. Probably. Keep asking those questions, guys. We are going to answer more of them very soon. I sincerely hope they're less maths oriented. <laughs> Woo. All right, so high risk area. I think this is, is this the first one that we've done for this particular save file? Uh, yeah, this is the first one. So high risk areas are a unique environment that puts you up against a relentless number of enemies that will constantly be coming at you. You have to destroy X number of units that will then fill up a boss meter, boss comes out, Enemies will still keep spawning in this time. Like the ones that are current will leave, but then the boss warps in and then more enemies can keep piling on. Um, and the uh, the big benefit to the high-risk area is that you can unlock catalyst blueprints if you survive. Oh gosh, maybe Gary was right. Maybe, maybe the next death is inbound pretty quick. I'm gonna do my best, that's all I can do, right? Oh, come on! Really? Well, that's, that's incredibly unfortunate. Also, why did we show up into a high-risk area without refreshing any- Ah! Death! Why did we- Why didn't we do this? Hang on a second. Let's craft something. Let's craft- Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Oh, yeah! Can't even do it. We need a power unit H1. Let's see, can we can we craft the missing components? We certainly can. We certainly can. Hey, Eric, how did you get to the craft missing components without having to go over to the other things to do that? Well, that's a great question. We actually added this as a matter of convenience. So if you wanted to, you could track the missing components right here and it highlights them yellow independently from the green that you see for the perks. But here, we just want that power unit H1, HX1. So by pressing crafting missing components, you can see what resources are required for it. I can do that, and then I can craft it. Because we all know I'm gonna need it. Are we gonna survive for 20 seconds? I don't mean to provide spoilers in these streams, but the answer is no. <laughs> There's no way we're surviving. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, on the rare event that we do, we'll also add some damage limiters to here. This is why you should come prepared instead of fly in and be like, oh crap, I forgot the thing, and then craft it, because now I have to wait 20 seconds before I can use it. If you had a cargo unit full of nanobots, you couldn't exploit the system by just every time, oh, you need it, you just like cycle it upwards. Nope, nope, we don't allow that. Did I actually equip the level 10 perk? Well done, Greg. All right. Okay, we can use this. 
we can use this. Oh, they're both on cooldown. Bad choice. <laughs> wow! That's number five, nine. Here we go. Can we even target? Can we just go, go away? Mission will fail when leaving. I know, I just don't want the death. It's inevitable. Inevitable. We're gonna load uh, load game where we are in Prescott before we fly out to the high risk area. And what we're gonna do is this very basic thing, very simple, rudimentary, foundational thing called prepare. Uh, and that's what we're gonna do first. That's what we're gonna do. That is what I've decided. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go over here. We're gonna craft our missing components. Blop! Oh, delightful. Look at that. Oh, I just crafted the missing components. Lol. Let's try that one more time. <clears throat> so we crafted the missing component. Now we're gonna craft the nanobots that are large. Wonderful. Let's also craft ourselves a, a damage limiter. Because supposedly that helps. Not sure about this. We're not really getting too affected by things other than just straight up dying. Um, let's see. We're gonna do an energy injector because I'm finding out I'm running out of I'm running out of boost a lot. I almost need a, a better booster. Uh, let's go ahead and sell this. Not selling any boosters. I wonder could I let's look what our booster options. I'm not hopeful. Oh, we can do we can do an uncommon booster. Okay, let's see what we get. It's not going to be an eco booster. Recharge speeds is way worse. Oh my gosh, this is a bad idea. All right, never mind. We're not doing that. I think that's going to be our best option. Make sure you bring some skill next time. I, I love, I love this community so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. <laughs> so, what I could do though could level up some of this stuff. Man, it's gonna start chugging away. I don't have a lot. I can't even can't even get this stuff leveled up. Or no, that's sorry, not leveled up. There we go. I can. That's not too bad. Alright, let's 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 see what happens. Let's uh that's the first time I've upgraded a weapon's level. Whew. All right, so we got level 10s, Umbra and Penumbra. I don't know why I have our mining beam laser. We really should swap that out for something else. Let's get this raid booster upgraded too, because it could use some love. Yeah, that little bit is gonna be a lot. Okay, I know you, you might not be thinking it, but it's gonna be. Also the shield, I think. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Uh, also the renegade plating. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we're spending all of our stuff, but that's fine. Yeah, that's better. We don't need to upgrade our sensors. They're, they're fine. This only allows you to do it once, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, let's also upgrade the corrosion mines. That could be beneficial. Oh man, we're gonna run out of we're gonna run out of time for this stream. Well, maybe maybe we'll just save it here and we'll try the high risk area first thing uh, next time because we have a lot of screenshots to go through because you guys are mad lads. Oh my gosh, too many screenshots. They're all amazing. What do you guys think? Should we go to screenshots or do you want me to give this one more go? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? This might also be good. Or do play it safe. 
More death, excellent. Screenshot, fan art, one more try, okay, all right. Keep it coming, keep coming. HRA, okay, HRA, HRA from the same person. Don't care about screenshots? Oh my gosh, what a savage. What a savage. I think our community does some really cool screenshots, just to be clear. They are pretty awesome. All right, let's just do it. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of, of wanting to do more HRA. So let's give them one more go. Um, before we do that, we're gonna save all of our changes, because I do think these were good. Beam laser eh, sucks. It's, it's, let's make it less sucky. Oh, wait. Oh, we craft. That's right. We crafted it, so we can't upgrade its rarity. Um, we can increase its level. That, I don't think that was worth it. Oh, well, whatever. It didn't cost that much. All right. Let's do this. Let's try, try again. As ye old expression goes. What's the mutator on this? Enemies leave my encroachment field. Okay, yeah. So don't fly through death. Okay, cool. All right, let's see what we get to. And then maybe whenever we get to the screenshots, we'll just kind of like, you know, make it snappy. Because that's what, that's what this means. Literally snapping make it snappy. Wow, why did I explain that? Whew. All right, it's getting late. It's almost 3 p.m. for me, guys. <laughs> Woo! Mmm! Give me that music! No, that is not the target that I designated! I call shenanigans. I call shenanigans. That was that was so frustrating. Wasted my ult on a drone? Excuse me? Good job, Greg. Hey, remember when I said not to fly through uh, where they died? Yeah, oh, we, we died. We died already. The music's awesome, though! All right, screenshot time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but we can all agree that that soundtrack's a banger though right please yes like it's literally just, like your ship oh gosh absolutely it's just i mean it invigorates me and it's just like yeah i could do this like needlessly throwing myself into my own death i don't care but it just pumps you up right like gyro like just absolutely chef's kiss to that mad lad okay let's go ahead and transfer over to screenshots now <laughs> thanks for uh, letting me add another uh, death to the counter when we go through these screenshots another big reason why we have a lot of time here is we're going to have a more intimate space to answer questions all right it's gonna be it's gonna be wonderful it's gonna be great so let's uh give me one second as you look at our social connections on how to enjoy us in so many other places and so many other spaces. Oh my gosh, look at all of this. Look at all of these places. The Discord in particular is a fine place to go. We have a lot of chatters talking about little strategies here and there, asking lots of questions. We also have a uh, uh, Ask RFG uh, thread that I will admittedly say I'm a bit behind on due to other responsibilities. But uh, yeah, we, we like to make sure that you have your questions answered. That's a big reason why we do these streams, a uh, big reason why we call ourselves a transparent uh, game development company. That's what we do. And it wouldn't make sense for us to not share important links like this so that you know where you can come talk to us. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right. So now we're in the phase where we are going to share these beautiful screenshots. This one particular comes from Highbarf. This comes from two weeks ago. These were some that I didn't quite get to by the end of last stream. Um, and as we're going through these screenshots, uh, Gary is going to throw more of your questions my way. We're gonna have a good time getting them all answered and stuff and things. So how about you? What do we got? Right, we have a question from T3Q, but it's something that they found during testing. Uh, 
They said that earlier this week they found it weird that they could sit in a bomber with absolutely no legendaries and no drones to farm enemies repeatedly without any human interaction uh, in normal mode. They said that they think that normal is a bit too easy uh, with the balance changes today. Will we see changes made that make this farming not possible so players have to play the game? It was an oddly specific farming situation that sounds more like an unintended sort of uh, means to an end. Um, but in general, if you are finding key ways to utilize a build to overcome your foes, then that should feel good. I don't think that we would look at that and say, oh, well, because this is too easy, we need to rebalance the entire difficulty system across the board. I'm certain that there are some ways that can certainly exploit the game more than others. I will like be the first to say that for sure. Um, this shot comes from Silver Knoll, by the way. Um, but I think it's also important to note that when we have situations that are reported like that, we don't want to just jump in and say, okay, well, the difficulty is the focal point here. We need to adjust the whole difficulty. It's more looking at the spe specificities of what you've just described regarding a bomber without any legendaries, you know, utilizing its energy system on its secondaries. Maybe we need to look more at the root of the problem instead of try to slap a Band-Aid across the entire game that could shift everything around, right? So basically what I'm saying is it's probably not going to be adjustments that we make across the board on the difficulty side. We will be looking at individual exploitive builds per se on a case-by-case -case basis to see just how bad or good it is and maybe refine some key parts of that for fairness so yeah there you go next question please as we're looking at another shot from high barf just like the symmetry it's nice it's pleasant uh, right pesky husky over on youtube um a bit of a law question this one they said that in Everspace 1, there was a cutscene that says that uh, literally it states, then came deployment for the war against the Oka. Mm -hmm. Then the Everspace 1 story obviously yeah. takes place. Then in Everspace 2, Maddox tells Eduardo that, oh, that uh, the, uh, the sorry the war ended 15 years ago. Yeah. Does that mean that oh, Commander Hawk was hunting clones for 15 years? No. No, no, no. Uh, let me clarify that. That's a great question. So basically, the events of Everspace 1 happened 15 years after the wars. The events of Everspace 1 take place 15 years after the wars. So once they deployed for war and they did all of the shenanigans and basically there was massive losses on both sides, then, um, then uh, Adam decided to kind of go on his merry little way because the cloning program was completely wiped. Uh, there was the treaties that were established, you know, maybe a little bit slippery, but for the most part, they were applicable, right? And as they continue to move on, here's another shot from Silver Knoll. I love these detail shots. As they continue to move on in their world, uh, Seth decided that he wanted to build his own outlaw sort of factions and, and details. And at one point, he calls up Adam. He's like, hey, yo, bro, let's go get some bears. And there's a cutscene where he's sitting down and an agreement is made. He's like, I, I want to use some of your cloning tech to try and do some stuff. And Adam agrees, uh, maybe because he's not sober. I'm not sure. But for whatever purpose, he tries to do this and they get caught. They get caught. Cloning is illegal in the DMZ. It is not meant to be used whatsoever. It's why the clone of Adam is quite literally being hunted down. Um, but they get caught. And then they're turned over to a character known as Admiral Kren Gork. I don't want to go into too much more details, but when that stuff happens, then you start seeing the events of Everspace 1 start taking place. That's like, that's in that territory, okay? So between the Okar Wars and Seth and Adam joining up and then getting caught is approximately 14-ish years, 14, 15 years, okay? After the wars, okay? And then between Everspace 1 and Everspace 2, it's probably another, there's there's maybe another year in there somewhere. It's, it's hard to specifically say the exact amount of time that has transpired. I'd have to get out my notes to 
give you like the very specifics of it all. But yes, there's a particular amount of time that transpires it's approximately in the, the 15, 16 years mark after the wars uh, where Everspace 2 is occurring. Is everyone connecting the dots? Is everyone, everyone good with this? This shot comes from morning night, by the way. They really like the design of the GMB light fighter. I don't blame them, it's a solid looking ship. But hopefully that clarifies those uh, those details for you. The So yeah, the time between the Okar colonial conflict and Everspace One is about 15-ish years, maybe more like 14. But regardless, it's an expansive amount of time there. And then you have um, Everspace One events and then Everspace Two events approximately maybe one or two years between there. All right, cool, excellent. Next question, please. As we're looking at this shot from Kazaa, by the way. Okie dokie. Right. Um, Denis Bonkarenko. Bondarenko, rather. Not Bonkarenko. <laughs> I'm butchering it like you do, Eric. Uh, over on YouTube. Uh, he's wondering, is it intended experience that the Vindicator is uh, much more survivable than other, sh other ships? Yes. Next question, please. That's to the point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a summon class. Uh, this shot comes from Dawn of Will. Uh, right. Uh, Wizard Jerry uh, wants to know, is it intentional that some systems' names have been changed during early access? Yes. <laughs> These are great questions. Keep it up. Next one. Let's go. Let's go. Right. Um, we, uh, we people are finding a few bugs. I know T3's found a, a few more bugs. One specifically is to do with nanobots. Uh, it said as it stands, large nanobots offer a worse repair potential when compared with small nanobots and medium nanobots, with medium being the best value while requiring the most reasonable resources. Uh, are they likely to see any tweaks with nanobots? Not really. The reason why it's a little bit more expensive to make large nanobots is because in the moment, they're actually giving you a much greater service than the mediums. If you're going for the best bang for your buck, of course the mediums are the middle ground solution. It's best price, best timing between uses, best amount of repair. However, when you're repairing a little bit less than what the large nanobots do, that little bit could be the difference between your life being saved and your life being dead. And I'm pretty sure that when you're dead, the cost is not nearly as important to you. So yes, they are in fact more expensive and they are less, uh, if you're looking at like the price per uh, gain, however, in the moment of use, that is the key moment. Uh, they're, yes, they are better, right? So it just depends on how you're breaking that down. If you're looking at it to be like cost effectiveness, then you're on the right track. Yes, medium nanobots are intentionally the best choice. But if you're looking at it from a standpoint of like, what's the most survivable, it's gonna depend on a lot of different factors. Um, and yeah, that's just how that kind of comes down. So let's transfer our image over to Dr. Volpo, Volpotonic, Vol, Dr. Dr. Volpotnik. Oh, it's like Robotnik. Okay, got it. <laughs> Dr. Um, Dr. Volpotnik. Uh, this is a shot that he had shared. It's mainly I'm showing this one because of the ship customization. I like the way he's done the, the things with the engines and stuff. Unfortunately, a little low grade shot and that's fine. You know, it's, it's we're not like judging people based on the resolution they're playing the game at or anything. But yeah, I just like showing off the styles. I think this is a classy looking Sentinel. Let's do another, um, another question. Let's keep going. Uh, right, we've got one lined up. Uh, it's actually uh, a bit of a law filler, if you could uh, embellish a little bit. Uh, people want to know, obviously, with the Okar Wars finishing, etc., uh, and Adam kind of uh, going about his business, but they want to actually specifically know what Adam was doing at the end of Everspace 1 and then into the beginning of Everspace 2. Could you yeah. embellish that for us? Sure. I mean, I can, I can embellish a little bit. Um, we haven't gone into, like hyper focus of what it all specifically looks at. But I can assure you that after the wars and after the cloning program was done and his research and his expertise wasn't necessarily needed, especially in a wartime uh, event, he was no longer required to work for the colonial fleet, right? 
So he was not a sort of like, he wasn't an agent. He wasn't a military body whatsoever. He was able to go off and kind of do his own thing uh, once those treaties were established um, and he was able to freely move about. And you know, those decisions probably looked like a lot of different things. He probably did a little bit of gambling. He probably drank a lot, uh, maybe a little, I don't know. He probably, you know, was just trying to figure out a place to live. Um, he probably caught up with his sister a little bit. I don't know if that's spoiler territory. Um, he probably, like there's, there's a lot of different things that he's just going about his daily routine. And I imagine that because of the wartime situations that he's had to go through, it felt boring in comparison. He wasn't moving, he wasn't flying around, he wasn't going about and like doing what you're doing in Everspace too, like just blowing everything up. No, he was like more stationed at locations. He was just trying to live his best life and it probably caught up with him where he needed a little bit more excitement. He needed to be doing something more. And that's where Seth Nobu comes in. Hey, you wanna do this thing? It'd be just like old times. It'd be really exciting. We could get paid really well. Let's do it. Whoops, got caught. Events of Everspace 1. Woo! So, yeah, there's a there's a lot of different things that could have happened between that time period. Um, but yeah, I mean, no, most notably, uh, this shot comes from T3Q, by the way. Lots of items. Lots of Starforged items in particular. Um, great looking screenshot. Or wait, no, those, you can't tell it's Starforged. My bad. No, they're just a lot of items. That's, that's what's the key point here. Um... But uh, yeah, that's that's mainly gonna be kind of the walk through the events, if you will. Uh, let's go ahead and change over to a Dire Raven's shot here. Uh, he said even the even these guys need a hug. He's just given a nice little hug to a nice little creature. Oh, it's so cute. Oh. What's his name? What is his name? Are you in the chat, Dire Raven? Because if you are, I wanna know what you named him. It would please me to no end. Uh, otherwise, let's get another question. Um, you kind of uh, tickle people's fancy for a bit of law now. Oh my gosh, Because uh, Glory uh, has asked, and I know some people on YouTube have asked, uh, because you've just mentioned Adam's sister. Yeah. Uh, will we ever see her again? Have you played Everspace 1? <laughs> <laughs> they are wondering if there was a potential clone. A potential clone? So, you know, it's it, actually, I like this. I like this follow-up because... One of the things that I have kind of been expressing uh, pertaining to the lore of what we're doing um, is I don't, we're gonna start with this. Let's be gentle. We're gonna be gentle with the approach. Within storytelling, it is imperative that characters have a purpose for what they do and what happens to them. It's very important. When they are doing everything in their power to like save other people or a people or like, a, you know, a, a positive ideal or, you know, whatever. And they like sacrifice themselves for that and they die. You know, that's powerful, right? That's, that's really strong. It's really good stuff. Uh, this shot comes from Toyota Yaris, by the way. And the lasting effects of what they did, like it echoes through the stars, if you will, right? Like stories are shared about what they've accomplished in their day. The second you start going into this territory of, well, let's just revive them, it strongly diminishes the value of that character. So if we wanted to go into like a territory of like cloning, for example, like, oh, well, maybe there was this character that died in Everspace One, you're planning on bringing them back? Well, we wanted their, their journey to that point have a purpose, like have a meaning. And maybe because of whatever happened, that's gonna have ramifications on other stories that are spiraling around it, you know? We haven't really seen Adam talking so much about his sister, for example, but who's to say that's not something on his mind, that something couldn't grow even further because, you know, he is a clone instead of the actual Adam who had the sister. Um, so it's, it's particularly interesting. It's particularly interesting, but more or less, um, I can I can say that just going to this idea of oh yeah, this character died. Oh whoops, let's um, let's just revive him with cloning. That's not th that flattens the narrative so fast. It makes characters so less interesting, and it just there's not. If we were to go any sort of route with cloning, because yes, of course it exists. If we were to go any sort of route 
we would take a great amount of care to push any type of narrative with that. And I can very soundly say that right now, uh, no, there's not really any plans to do any sort of like shenanigans with, you know, anything on that front. So, um, but if, if we did, we would take a great amount of care um, should we go in that direction. So thanks for listening to that little diatribe, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's an important one. It's, it's storytelling 101. Uh, characters need to have purpose uh, and, and lasting results thereof. Uh, this shot comes from Dr. Volpotnik again, um, digging his particular style that he's got going on. And I think it just capitalizes on the environment as well. Another question, please. Sorry. Woo. Uh, no worries. Uh, it's just something that has cropped up in the Twitch chat, and it came from the secret president. Uh, and they were just asking about a roadmap, uh, obviously, for the, the coming months and years ahead. Now, Michael has uh, chimed in on this, and they said oh. that they're currently working on our roadmap as we speak. We plan to share more later this summer. Yeah. Yeah, we've been making some good progress on our roadmap to make sure that everything's ironed out and where it needs to be. Um, for those of you who don't know kind of what we have stated at this point in time, let me just cover some of that ground. So there's going to be a free content update probably later this year. Um, we have consoles coming in the summer. We have premium DLC uh, that is scheduled for 2024. The mid mid 2024 is what we have stated. Um, my guess is probably it's that there could, we'll have more information on what that information looks like in the future, apparently this summer. Uh, Cause yeah, we have been working on the roadmap. So thank you for that clarity, Michael. Thank you for that clarity. All right, let's jump over to another shot from Dawn of Will. Action shots, dynamic angles, and a dead something out there. I don't know what it is, but it makes me happy. Hopefully it's a sniper drone. Whew. Good, good stuff. Let's have another question. Uh, I haven't got anything lined oh, up yet. Oh my gosh, that's great. Just that's waiting. great. Uh, the, the which summer bearded frog is asking moon summer, um, ISS summer, Australian summer. It would be, um, I think it's the summer that's generally associated with like the um, the the northern hemisphere, I believe. Uh, the um, uh, what's what's that specific? I know it has a specific. Oh my gosh. Basically, like the the uh, the one that's mainly recognized by like European and American. Uh, yeah, we go so by Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. Is it just is it just called Norman Northern Hemisphere? Is it? I feel like it has a different term, but, but anyway. Um, regardless, that that summer, no, not Egypt, not Egyptian summer. You guys are ridiculous. We got another shot from High Barf here. He throws a lot at us, and every now and then we got a nice one. I like the way that his ship is down below on this shot. Just makes it look. Something of like a menace where this, ra it's a raider, right? It's a raider. I always want to call these marauders. They're uh, loosely based off of them, of course. Uh, but yeah, I just, I love how he's just down here like, ha ha, got you. Like, it's just, it's great. It's great to me. I love the way that he's composed that. Good, good stuff. <clears throat> Super duper. Let's go to Silver Knoll. Once again, lots of great shots. This one got a lot of love from other individuals in the Discord liking that up. It's always beautiful to see a nicely decorated ship. Um, I laugh because sometimes mine don't exactly come out that way. I'm liking the one in our stream, um, but uh, I love the way that he's composed his ship. I think it's, it's great, it's solid. I love the use of the emissive lights and the engine trails, everything about that. And then you have these stark metallic well, they're not super metallic, but they're these grays, these beautiful grays that are contrasting um, with the red, make it just stand out. And of course the planet in the background, the rings, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Sometimes you just need a nice little environmental shot. And I love this one too, because when I'm right here and I'm cutting off part of the image, it works great for the stream. I'm not really blocking anything. It's great. But still that movement moving forward into the unknown is important. It's nice movement in that photography. Very enjoyable. This one is another one from Silver Knoll. Lots of them from Silver Knoll. Lots of them from Silver Knoll. And this one, he's frozen. If you're wondering what's going on with the ship, that's what's happening. He got frozen. And I've never seen the ice spikes come up like that. <laughs> that's, uh, it's kind of funny. 
Um, obviously, it probably, it probably wasn't very funny in the moment, uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a particular generation of the icicles on the ship right there. Particular generation. I also like the, um, the, the oh my gosh, what's it called? The, the, the glow effect, I forgot what it's called. The, I like how it looks icy. It's great, it just comes together, it's nice. It's enjoyable. Did we, uh, was there another question? Did I miss a question? Uh, I think Sloan was just looking for some clarification uh, oh. over on YouTube about the free DLC that it was, I think, originally planned for the summertime, but uh, obviously uh, we need to pin that down with the roadmap. Yeah, yeah and um, just for clarity, and you probably have heard me say this, and I, I try to be very careful with my words. Obviously, I say some stuff that's a little weird, but then I try to, like, clarify. Um, I don't actually refer to it as free DLC. Um, and the reason for that is because this is just going to be an update to the game. It's a free content update that will just apply to the game. So it's not even something where you have to like go to see what other DLCs and add it or not add it. No, it's just going to be added content, straight up added free content that we just wanted to add a little bit more love to the game because we love you guys and you've shown us a lot of love and it just makes sense. So. I do call that a free content update specifically as opposed to a free DLC. I know technically speaking, it's more or less the same thing, but ugh. so yeah, there you go. Just, just point that out. We got a shot from Chemical Bro. Um, I was debating on sharing this one because potential spoilery territory, but still, um, I think that it is a beautiful shot and I wanted to share it with all of you. It comes together super well makes me happy. Eric needs a new chair. Are you hearing it squeak too? It's been squeaking for a long time. I, I need to like, I need to put some coconut oil on it. That's what I need to do. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I digress. So good, good stuff. Love this shot. Chemical bro. Um, if you're out there, give me more shots. I feel like you've slowed down. Granted, you've supplied like hundreds of shots, quite literally in the time of you playing Everspace 1 and 2. But keep it up, man. I love your shots. You do such a great job. Such a great job. So glad you didn't say WD-40. No, 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 thanks. Uh, let's do uh, one shot from AO1 Point Blake. Point, point Brink. Point, point Blank. Why can't I say that right? My mouth is dumb. <laughs> oh my gosh. But this shot, I had to do a quick double take on it. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, we need to, we need to start like a little, like a, how can, can we make, uh, like polls in the chat? That would be amazing. Like we, we, sh we need to collect screenshots that are uh, incredibly vague and you have to figure out if it's Everspace 1 or Everspace 2. This is one where I had to like do a quick double take. Um, and of course, whenever you really start focusing on it, I was like, oh yeah, of course this is Everspace 1. But still, I love how the gunship is just laid out here nice colors too the gray white and yellow um orange orange it's more orange uh comes together incredibly well here and whatever laser that is it looks awesome love the way it comes together good 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 stuff all right next up we have this shot from multiverse of madness who was showing his everspace one vr shot uh inside of the scout and i will say that this one is very much self-serving for a number of reasons um in particular i'm just going to <clears throat> casually point at the at my ceiling right there i'm pointing out a spot on my ceiling definitely not anywhere on the image itself um, but for those of you who don't know the story um i actually was hired uh into rockfish i was just a backer for everspace one and one of the means that they showed some love to me was by um, plugging me literally into the game. So that was kind of a, a fun little sort of thing. Not a lot of people know about this Easter egg, but it is in there. It is in there. Right there! Ha! All right. Last but not least, we got Wizard Jerry shot, and I love the way that he's utilized the Prescott Starbase graphic to make it look like a clover. I just, I love the color usage here. Um, and I love how everything else comes together with the lights. The emissive lights are just, oh my gosh, it's, I love it. I love it so much. It's a very good choice all around. It's an incredibly sexy looking Vanguard. I want to fly that. Um, I love the way that it's been put together. I also think it fits 
really well just in the ice sort of territories. Uh, not to say that it couldn't anywhere else, but still, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly well composed uh, ship design. So super cool, super cool, Wizard Jerry. Uh, so thank you for everyone who supplied those screenshots. I pull most of my screenshots, if not all, from the Discord. So if you are wanting to see maybe your screenshot show up during a stream, you can absolutely do that. Just go to the screenshots channel and slap it on in there. I do generally veer towards ones that get more likes than not. Um, and also if it's just a dang fine screenshot because I did go to art school and I know what some good photography is meant to look like. Um, I just take an assortment of them and slap them in and uh, it's fun. It's a good time. And I'd love to highlight your ships. I love highlighting people's ships. Love the way that you've been customizing them. Oh, it's so good. It's so stinking good. So, but yeah, uh, if there's any last minute question, we have two minutes left, two minutes. So if there's nothing that comes through at the moment, everybody's stunned as everyone, usual. Everyone listening for my chair to squeak and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and YouTube is being YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Art school, yes. I I, uh, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts. My wife likes to say that I went to coloring school. Because, I mean, let's be real, it's basically basically what I did. Yeah, Eric even brought his crayons when, uh, when we went to Boston. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that I have crayons wherever I'm at. <laughs> I love it. It's got a green box that's showing through your green screen. Yeah, no, no big deal, no big deal. Yeah, I just like my my <laughs> my choice of drawing utensil is a crayon. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. What's what's wrong with that? Okay. What's wrong with that? <laughs> You're all jealous. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the stream. The conclusion of the stream is so wild right now. Oh. The, the, the irony is, to be fair, Eric did not bring his crayons to Boston, but then he actually pulls out the crayons. <laughs> I think that's going to wrap up the stream, though. Um, listen, guys, seriously, thank you so much for being here. It is always an absolute pleasure to serve you in these streams every Friday, going through these nightmare runs to probably bite off more than I could chew, uh, but it's a dang good time. Oh my gosh, and the progress that we're making feels so good. Oh my gosh, once we get through like the, the level 10 to 15 gap, I feel like that's like one of the most challenging parts of the game. Once we get through that, I think it's gonna be a bit more uh, smooth sailing from here, but I guess, You'll have to find out by keep showing up on Fridays. That's the only way to do it. Um, one other thing to mention is that I will be joining Vigo, who's actually in the chat right now. Um, they are doing Alienwares, doing a stream all this month, every single Monday, where they're playing through Everspace 2. And it's a really good time. We, uh, we actually synergize quite well together. Vigo and I, we're like our own coupled set. You get a set bonus if you show up. So definitely swing on by. I believe it's, is it 10, 10, no, 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 it's, it's 11 a.m. Eastern time, is that right? I think that's right. Um, but yeah, um, definitely swing on by, it'll be, it'll be a fun time. I join them for a two hour stream. Um, otherwise, guys, I hope that you have a fantastically beautiful weekend and all the shenanigans that you'll pull off. Keep sharing your screenshots and your stories, all that fun stuff. You guys have been absolutely awesome and I have been absolutely Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome and we'll catch you in the next stream. Toodles!
another fantastic stream because of you guys. Seriously, the energy that you all provide, it is immense. You are the ones that make me decide to throw myself into countless enemies, even though the music is awesome. Uh, you're the ones who just like asking really good questions, honestly. A lot of lore questions today, and I'm appreciative of that. For those of you who don't know, um, I have helped straighten out the lore a number of times within the Everspace universe, um, uh, just because there's a lot to handle, uh, and we need more eyes on it. And uh, I'm I'm very happy to make sure that it makes sense as a cohesive whole, uh, even though it still requires, you know, some degree of separation from reality. And that's, you know, that's fine. Um, I Seriously, like... Providing additional information and, and clarifying details like this is this is what we thrive to do in these streams. This is what we thrive to do as a company. And I am incredibly happy for the inevitable information we'll share with our roadmap uh, in this summer regarding like getting our consoles out there and updating all the things. Um, just a, a little, little tidbit of information. Um, there is an update that went live for Steam uh, this week, right? Like. That hasn't hit good old games yet. Um, it hasn't gone live. There were some details we had to be very gentle about navigating, which is why it did not get pushed for that. So if you're on GOG and you're like, where's the update? It should be going live on Monday. Um, I don't think it should be delayed any more than that, but just know, please know, uh, it, would, it would be going live um, the start of next week as opposed to over the weekend or anything like that. Um, the next thing I need to mention to you guys, and I know some of you guys are going to get really sad right now. I am going to rest my throat tonight. <laughs> um, I know that you can't really feel my throat night now, right now, because that would be weird. Um, but normally at the end of the streams, I like to have shenanigans and I, I, I attempt to beatbox. Um, it's, it's just a thing that I do. Um, I would hurt myself if I did it tonight. So I'm sorry about that. Cannot do it tonight. Uh, but we will reserve this space for next week and we'll have some nice shenanigans with all of that stuff just to make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, keeling over and dying. I don't think that would be very delightful uh, for you to return to a stream where it's just an empty chair. Uh, well, well, no, that's not true. Geekbite, you'd take over, wouldn't you? It'd be yeah, fine. Yeah, yes. Yeah, like, Get out of there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, but yeah. Otherwise, um, is there anything else? Is there, is that all the, that's all the details, right? Did you, Gary, I, I did think you want to say is. anything? I think uh, no, thanks for being awesome on the Discord and uh, on Steam. Keep reporting those bugs. Uh, I'll put the, the link up for any bug reports that you come across in the game. And hopefully, we've nailed down the flak bug. So please, we don't want to see that again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, regarding the flak bug, just one last little detail on that front too, just because it, it came up. Um, we are not 100% sure if it's been crushed. So if anybody at all encounters a flak bug, let us know immediately. We want that thing destroyed. We're at like the 99% sure phase, um, but it's possible that there could still be uh, some elements out there. Just let us know. Let us know. You, you encounter something that's wonky or weird, we want to fix it. We want the gameplay experience to be the best for all of you. And sometimes that means keeping some exploits in. Uh, but like, we don't want stuff that crashes the game, right? That sucks. So let us know. We want to make this the best experience possible. And that's why we're adding more content for free and why we're working on premium DLC. You know, you, you get it. You get it. All right. Truly, I'm going to go rest my throat. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. And don't stop being awesome because you really are. I love each and every one of you. You're incredible. All right. I'm out of here. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>